All I have in this world is my balls and my word. And I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? G'day Legends, Cast Chronicles. All right, we're back with another video. And so today I thought that I would do a video on Filthy Phil, the alleged sour grapist that refused to go to protection. So, all right, let's go. So I was at MRC, and if you guys don't know, MRC is a remand prison, um, which is where they send... Um, prisoners that have been refused bail um, but are still awaiting their sentencing, their trial or whatever. They've still got court going on. So they then get sent to what's called a remand prison. And so this remand prison is called MRC, Metropolitan Remand Centre. And so, yeah, so this was about 2012, 2013. And um, so at the time I was in a yard. So MRC is separated into three different yards and um, they have got two or three units within those three yards. Um, and a yard at MRC is predominantly like the naughty people's yard. So if you've been naughty at MRC, you will go to A Yard and they will generally send you to Atwood. So last time I was there, they used to do this thing called regimes. And so when you're on regimes, um, you were locked in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, whereas everyone else was locked in at the normal time of 7.30 at night, quarter to 8, whenever it was. So anyway, a bit of a context into MRC. There you go. So at the time I was working in the kitchen. So at MRC, um, the, the, the criminals, um, in that prison prepare the meals, cook the meals, everything. So at this time I was actually head chef. It has nothing to do with this story, but I thought I'd chuck it in there anyway. But, um, yeah, I was head chef at the time and so I remember the day before in the smoko room at the kitchen, this is back before smokes were um, illegal in prison, and there, there was talk of, of this person that was in my yard but was in a different unit to me but we were still in the same yard and that this guy may or may not have been charged with sour graping um, offences. So if you don't know what a graping offence is, just take the um, G off and that should find the word you're looking for there. But anyway, so there was talk about that that this guy was was getting around in the mainstream. Now, if you guys don't know, it's generally common knowledge that if you are some type of sex offender like that or any type of offender like that, you have any offences like that, that you will generally be made go to um, protection um, for your own safety because, um, you know, everybody out there in the mainstream does not like a so anybody who has any type of sex offences on them whatsoever. So anyway, there was talk about it the day before, I remember, but the way I actually came about talking to this gentleman was actually pretty bizarre. So the next day, once again, we we're out in the smoko shed and all the boys were talking about this person who was allegedly in a yard and he was on sour graping offences. So this conversation had been going on for about, I don't know, a few minutes. And there was a gentleman sitting across from me to my left and I hadn't seen him before. But anyway, it, it was not uncommon to get new people in the kitchen every single day. And especially at a remand prison where people are coming and going from jail or whatnot. So anyway, yeah, we're, we're all talking about this gentleman. And then the guy pipes up, stands up and he said, um, I think you're talking about me. And it really took took me by surprise i was like what are you talking about mate and he goes well the person you're talking about is me and he said i am charged with graping offenses um but i'm charged with them on my wife and i was like wait hang on wait wait pump your brakes buddy cool your jets for a minute we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here so you're telling me that you are definitely in on a graping offence. And he said, yes, I am. They are my charges. I said, so what are you doing here, mate? And like I started losing and he's like, well, can you please just listen to my story, blah, blah, blah. 
and the other boys, some of the boys were like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't want to hear your story. And some of the boys were like, yeah, yeah we want to listen to your story. And so anyway, the guy continued to tell us this story, how he um, caught his partner cheating and, um, yeah, whilst catching his partner cheating, um, he um, was asked to leave the house or whatnot. And in that, um, him and his partner had had broken up or whatnot. Now, he says that over this breaking up time, there was an intervention order put against them and she had invited him around. One thing led to the other, blah, blah, blah. He said it was all consensual and she said that it wasn't. And so I was really in two minds. I was like, you know, I've kind of got it you know, like have respect for this guy for being so open about it, knowing damn well that he is quite likely to end up with a shank sandwich in him at any time and especially in the exact yard that he was in at that time. Um, a yard is not the place where you want to be, you know, getting found out that you're a sour grapist or whatnot. So I remember over the time, you know, poor filthy Phil, um, he, he got stomped out a few times. Um, and every single one of those times that Phil got stomped out, he came back to the main with a smile on his face and said, I'm not going, you just can't make me go there and I will not go there. So the, the screws were trying to make him go there. Every single crim in the jail was trying to make him go there. And he just continued to say, you can bash me every single day. You can do this shit to me every single day but nothing is going to change. I'm going to come back as soon as I'm ready to come back and healthy enough, I will come back for you guys to do it all over again because you guys watch. When I do my court case, he kept saying, I am going to get found not guilty. Now, I remember thinking, um, this guy actually, I ended up being in the same unit as this guy and it was common knowledge that this guy was in on a sour graping charge and, you know, he, he kind of, kind of got let through the brakes and and everyone kind of let their guard down on him a bit I, I would say and um yeah and then I remember um I remember one day just walking through the unit and and the screws were were emptying out filthy Phil's cell and I was like oh what, what happened to Phil did he go to protection and they were like nah he 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 got out at court he he bet his trial at court all charges dropped he is a free man and I was like, damn, that guy literally told us that that was exactly what was going to happen, but nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to hear it. And my respect for, I'm not going to say his last name, and I'm not even going to call him Filthy Phil anymore, but my respect for Phil grew immensely because I was like, and he was literally there for about 18 months and he was put through 18 months of absolute hell. And um, yeah, so... You know, I guess, I guess, um, you know, that's that's another crazy thing about jail is is that you know you just well, I guess you just never know, and and we never knew with with him, and and I guess everyone did let their guard down and they let him stay in the yard, and and he was right all along, and 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 poor Phil got stomped out a lot of times um, for for his charges, exactly for his charges, and um, you know. My, my hat goes off to you, Phil, for putting up with all that shit for, for 18 months and, and getting found not guilty. Um, and, yeah, so I guess I answered this question because somebody asked me, you know, has there ever been any um, grapists that have been walked through the mainstream? And absolutely they have. And there was actually another guy who's, who's, who's dead now. He had some big standoff with the police. It was all over the news. I won't say his last name. His name was Tony though. <laughs> and so this guy actually used to go from Barwon um, and used to go into protection to do um, the sour graping course so the sour graping offenders course um which is you know like the serious violent offenders like myself i'm a serious violent offender you have to do the violence course before you are eligible for any type of parole well for the offenders i will say it is the same for them they have to um they have to do some kind of a program before they are eligible for parole and this guy used to go from 
Bowen mainstream into Bowen protection every second day to do his course. This guy was a very, very well-known person. Nobody used to say anything to him about it. Um, as a matter of fact, he was one of the most dangerous people in that prison, absolutely, without a doubt. And, um, yeah, I remember being very young at this time, but I, I also remember it happening. So the answer to that question is, yeah, I guess they do get around every now and then. Um, this guy was a very well-known somebody and, um, you know, had a pretty pretty big standoff with the police. There was a big showdown for like 24 hours or something like that and he, he um, you know, ultimately um, was unalived by himself. But, um, yeah, there's the answer to that question that, yeah, I guess they do get around in there sometimes. All right, guys, I've been the Chaos Chronicles, which reminds me, guys, if you haven't jumped up there and shot me a subscription, that would be absolutely appreciated. I would really, really like that. And if you smash that bell, you will never miss any of my clips again. That way, when I post a video, bam, it will be right in your notifications. Uh, Chaos Chronicles just dropped a vid. All right, guys, Chaos Chronicles, we I am also the guy decides if you and your friends walk out of here or not.